If you've ever spent any time inside a camper van, you know that there is one thing that takes up all the space, and that is the bed. You can come up with a clever way to make the bed disappear, and we will work on that in the future, but today we're going to gain space by turning the bed sideways. This seems simple, but most vans are narrower than a bed is long. This is one of those areas in life where being short is an advantage, but I am not short. So we're going to have to fix this with a sawzall and 6 kilograms of plastic. Van flares, sometimes called bump outs or capsules, are body extensions that increase the width of the interior, usually for a bed. They go in that spot where it looks like there should be a window. You've seen a hundred of these, even if you don't remember. Many camper vans have them, they're usually fiberglass, sometimes they have a window in them, and they're kind of expensive. There are two ways to get a van flare. One of them costs $2,000, the other way costs $2,000, but you get a free 3D printer in the end. I already have a 3D printer, so this is going to cost me about 300 bucks. I see people printing large things online a lot, and I've always kind of scoffed at it, but there's no reason it shouldn't work, and I'm kind of curious, so I'm going to give it a shot. I did consider making this with fiberglass. I have a CNC router that I could use to mill out a mold and then lay up fiberglass, but I hate fiberglass. It probably wouldn't be any less expensive in the end, and there are some advantages to printing it. The biggest advantage is that I can get exactly the size I want. The only flare I found for my van gives about half as much space as I want, and I don't think they even sell it anymore. I can also design any feature into it that I want, which I'll get into later. And it will be a much better insulator. I talked about this in my insulation video, but a 3D printed part can be made with small air pockets inside that help it act like an insulator. Also, I can let the printer do all the work instead of me working with fiberglass in the garage, hating life for three solid days. The first thing we have to do is get the geometry of the side of the van. I'm going to call this the window, even though it's not a window. This is not flat. It has a slight curve in two directions. I got this geometry by 3D scanning it, but you don't actually need to do this. You could just stick a straight edge onto the window, touching in the middle, and then measure the distance from the straight edge to the sides of the window. Do this front to back and top to bottom, and that's your geometry. To get the perimeter, you just need about 20 minutes in a tape measure. Again, I just used the scanner. You might also be able to find a CAD model of your van online. I did, but I scanned it anyway just to double check. It was accurate. The next step is to cut a giant hole in the side of your van. I did this by drilling some starter holes and then using a jigsaw to just follow the perimeter of the inner panel. I used a sawzall to finish off the parts that were too hard to get to with the jigsaw. After this, we need to measure where the opening is relative to the window perimeter, or just 3D scan it again. This would be a great excuse to buy a scanner if you don't have one. I use the Einstar. They're not a sponsor or anything, but it's a pretty good scanner. After we have all the geometry, the next step is design. For this, you will need to know CAD, but this is a pretty simple design. I extruded out from the perimeter and added some fillets to smooth it out. The front edge gets one big fillet to smooth out the airflow. I got a little fancy with the rear trying to angle it in while keeping a somewhat sharp edge on the back. This will help detach the airflow so we don't have too much added aero drag from this thing. I considered running an aero analysis on it, but then I remembered I don't care that much. You could pretty easily add a window into this. I could add a groove in two sides and have a laser cut piece of Lexan drop in, possibly with a seal around the edge. I decided not to just because I want to keep this simple and clean looking, though I probably need to add some windows to this creepy looking van at some point. The outside wall of this is three quarters of an inch thick, but the top and bottom are thicker because the cutout is smaller than the full window size. This gives plenty of area for threaded holes. These are blind holes, they don't go all the way through, so there's no risk of water leaking in through them. I added 12 threaded holes around the perimeter. I also added this ledge on the bottom. I did this so the inside would have a flat platform for the mattress to sit on. This is one of those advantages of 3D printing this. The inside geometry is not dependent on the outside geometry. I thought about doing the same thing on the front edge, since the opening cutout is not as large as the outside area. I could have also shortened this a bit, but the extra length let me get that big radius without cutting into the usable space. So now I have this little cubby space. I designed a cup holder that I can add for a water bottle or a pee bottle or a pee bottle that I will confuse with a water bottle in the middle of the night. I'll be printing this on my H2D, which has a large print volume. Unfortunately, the bump out is extra large, so I will need to chop it up into about 10 smaller pieces. I tried to think of a clever way to fasten these all together, but in the end, I just decided to glue them. I added holes for dowel pins to locate everything together. I printed some test pieces to get the correct hole size for the dowels, and then I spent a week and a half printing pieces. Actually, I spent a week and a half doing other stuff. The printer did all the work. I used ASA CF for this. ASA is a great material for outdoor use. It's strong, prints well, and is resistant to UV. I used carbon fiber reinforced filament for two reasons. One is that it prints more dimensionally accurate. It resists warping and moving in the printer, and that's great since there are 10 of these parts, and any variation could stack up to make this not fit anymore. 
The other reason I used carbon fiber reinforced filament is that it has a coefficient of thermal expansion much closer to the steel that the van body is made from. So temperature changes are not going to make the van flare expand too much more than the van. I went pretty heavy on this part, six walls and 20% infill. This is more than you need. I could probably park my car on this thing. It was supposed to use just under six spools of filament, but I messed up a couple of things, so it took me seven in the end. Bamboo supports this channel, but I did buy all this filament. It cost me about 300 bucks, but if I was doing this again, I'd thin up the walls and infill and do it for about 200. By the way, Bamboo is currently having their anniversary sale, so you can do this kind of thing right now for way less than $2,000. I had the genius idea of taping up the seams and then cutting the tape before we glued it all together. This way the adhesive would be easy to remove. I could just peel it off with the tape. In reality, it just kind of glued a bunch of tape in the gaps that was hard to get out. You can bond ABS parts together with acetone and they make ABS specific glue, though I'm not sure if it works as well on ASA, even though ABS and ASA are very similar. So I'm just going to use DP420. It's a two-part adhesive from 3M that was apparently named by a stoned teenager. This stuff is kind of amazing and kind of expensive. It's great whenever you really don't want something coming apart. I did consider coating this whole thing in a layer of fiberglass after gluing it all together. That's pretty common with large parts like this. It would make it stronger and waterproof between the seams, but I kind of want to just see if it'll work. I'm feeling lucky. Anyway, we clamped it all together, weighed it down, and gave it a day to become one piece. The panels mostly lined up, but you could definitely see the cracks between them, so I slapped on some of that finishing glaze I had left over from painting the race car. Now, if you watch that video, you know I'm not about to do all the proper prep and painting to make this thing match my van. I do want it to blend in a little more than black with body filler smeared on it, so I decided to go with truck bed liner. I found a color that looked like it might kind of match, and then I painted it. This was super easy. It masked all the imperfections, and I might just use bed liner for everything that I paint in the future. Before installing it, I decided to line the inside with some fabric. I'm using this dark blue fabric inside the van in a few places. I made a template first with some construction paper and then cut out the fabric. Then we realized it was backwards because we cut the fabric out with the template upside down. So we set the cut fabric down on more fabric facing the opposite direction, cut out a new piece, and installed that with some spray adhesive. I also printed out a frame for the inside to kind of hide the jagged cut edge of the metal. I printed this out in a bunch of pieces and then glued them together in the driveway and also glued it to the driveway. I also used this as a template to drill the holes in the body to get the fasteners through. After that, we did a test fit, and it mostly looked good. Some of the holes needed to be opened up, nothing too serious, and after that, we were ready to install the flare. I squeezed out a bunch of gray adhesive onto the flare. I used this stuff. It's flexible, so it can deal with a little bit of movement from body twist or thermal expansion or whatever. I raised up the flare, slid the studs into the top holes, and then added screws to the inside to clamp it all down. Pretty much immediately after this, I realized that I forgot to prep the surface. I should have cleaned the paint down with some acetone and alcohol and probably even scuffed it with sandpaper, and I didn't do any of that. I didn't even wipe off the dirt, and there was a lot, because it hadn't been washed since before the previous owner removed all the decals from her catering business. So that's not good. If this was only held on with the adhesive, I would cut it off and redo it, but since it's also held on with a dozen bolts, I'm not that worried about it. Also, like I said, I'm feeling lucky. I added in the inside trim piece. I still need to add some more trim around the outside to hide all the ugliness, but this part is great. I got a lot more room lined nicely with some fabric, and there's even a place for a bottle of what is probably apple juice, or yellow Gatorade, or maybe pee. The outside looks great. The color is just enough of a match so it doesn't stick out too much. Speaking of sticking out, it doesn't get in the way of my mirror. I think I picked a pretty good depth. It also breaks up the boring flat side of the van. The other side, though, still boring and flat. Vans used to be cool, and not just because people stuck a bunch of unnecessary off-road stuff on them. No, they had style. They had dragons and wizards, and I think we should bring that back. I'm gonna bring it back. So I measured that big empty window area on the van, commissioned a custom art piece, and stuck it on the van. Oh yeah, super wizard mat battling a dragon. It's so perfect. Here's my favorite part. When you open the side door, Super Wizard Matt defeats the dragon. <coughs> By the way, Super Wizard Matt is the newest sticker for patrons, so if you want to support my stupid shenanigans and also get stickers, head over to Patreon and sign up. So there you have it. If you want a flare for your van, you can make one yourself with a 3D printer, and all you haters out there who said it wouldn't work, you are totally wrong because it has worked flawlessly without any problem. Okay, so there were some problems. I took this amazing bump out and wizard mural out to the desert towing the Viper. It drove like a champ and made it all the way out and back without issue. But after another week, I noticed an issue. A crack had formed right at the seam of two of the parts. I sprayed some water on it and it definitely leaked through to the inside. 
I like to shoot from the hip here a lot, and sometimes it doesn't work. I knew I should have wrapped the outside in a layer of fiberglass, but I mostly wanted to just see if it would work without that. And uh, no, it doesn't. I also found out the adhesive doesn't like to stick to ASA, both the DP420 stuff that usually bonds everything, and the gray stuff that I used to stick the flare to the van. I decided to remove the whole thing and wrap it in fiberglass. This was about half an hour of scraping and prying and trying not to destroy the whole thing, but it did come off in one piece, mostly. Remember how I forgot to clean the surface of the van before we put the flare on? Well, I thought I might get lucky and the adhesive would just kind of come right off the van, and it did come off pretty easily, but it came off the printed side. It stuck really well to the dirty van, kind of impressively. I scraped on this for a while before I remembered I have that 3M eraser wheel, which did a great job of ripping most of the rest of it off. It's a little odd that the adhesive was so adhered to the dirty van and not the 3D printed part, but I'm not too worried about this adhesion since I still have a dozen screws holding it in. What I'm not looking forward to is sanding down all this truck bed liner. I don't know why my life constantly revolves around sanding. I can't get away from it. I must have done something awful in a previous life. I hate sanding, but at least it's not the only thing I hate more than sanding, which is, of course, working with fiberglass. Anyway, the next step is to wrap this thing in fiberglass. This is still better than making the whole thing out of fiberglass because I get all the interior features and I don't need to prep a mold surface or release anything from a mold. I laid down two layers of fiberglass, smeared on some epoxy resin, and then wrapped it all in peel ply to get a nice surface finish for paint. I added some fairing compound and, of course, more sanding to make sure it was somewhat of a smooth finish. Then I painted it again with truck bed liner, this time with a little less care and a little more impatience. We installed it back on the van, this time remembering to wipe down the metal first, and then we took it all the way to the desert again just to be sure, and it worked great. First try. So there you have it. If you want to bump out on your van, you could be boring and buy one. Or you could print it yourself and also commission artwork of a wizard fighting a dragon on the side of your van. Just don't forget the fiberglass. Used to be that you had to impress people to get people to watch your show, but now all you have to do is impress the algorithm. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It actually helps the channel a lot. And of course, all hail the algorithm.